Welcome back to Put Like Crossover. Dean's here, Mr. CIS. I'm kind of next to greatness right now. <laughs> Marky Mark, JR still here. But let's dive into the Philippines. Every, there's a lot of Filipino Canadians that went to the Philippines or are thinking of going to the Philippines. You've lived it. And now you can tell us all the stories about the Philippines. But you just ended on, you got the interest of a lot of Asians. Agents, not Asians. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about like their pitches to you or like what really made you pull the trigger of going to the Philippines? You know, it was, it was money. Mm -hmm. You know, I was broke and I needed money. Mm -hmm. It was simple as that. I had $50 in my bank account and someone telling me I could make money or find a summer job in Toronto. I took those $50, I jumped on a plane, and I went to the Philippines. I think my dad gave me some pesos. Um, but that was it. It was really about money. I didn't know what was, was going to be at the other end. I had no idea. I never met my agent. I never met anybody. I didn't know anybody in the Philippines. I just went. Mm -hmm. you know? And like thinking about it now, it was, it was, it was really foolish to go with with, with what I went with. Um, but there was someone waiting for me. They had a sign, they picked me up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I know, they, like, the, the agent's name is Danny Espiritu, and he handles a lot of, like, the guys from Canada that come over now. And, like, that's usually a big connection. And he's one of the main agents within the PBA. And, and I, would, I would have been his first um, Canadian talent that he was bringing over. Mm -hmm. So it really was, uh, really was just, a risky kind of just endeavor just to even to go over there. Mm -hmm. And what was like the first practice like and the first... Because yeah, you didn't know about... Landing didn't know there in general because yeah. you've never been in the Philippines. And your roots weren't really... You didn't know a lot about Philippines and Filipino culture. So when you got there, how did you take it? Oh, uh, like... I, yeah, I didn't even know what to expect and what I thought I was going to expect was nothing like what I what I saw I didn't realize there were that many people I didn't I didn't think that the level of poverty were what they were uh, the level of like really rich um, like it was very rich in certain parts and very poor in other parts like that just that division was something that shocked me um, I didn't know what to eat you know I was, it was everything was a culture shock for me you know it's like outside of Toronto, I hadn't really been anywhere. So mm -hmm. that was uh, probably the first time that I was really thrown back and I hadn't done much traveling up until that point, so. And what did you talk about with your, with your agent? Because I guess, could you, could you have gone to the PBA Street or did he say like, we start with the MBA or was there other options that you, were you mulling over? Um, the PBA was an option, but at the time I went, it was mid season and each team was looking, there, a new rule came where you could bring one Phil American, they called them Phil Ams, and, and that person had to be under six foot eight. So they weren't gonna use that choice for me, because they, if they chose me, then another team would just get someone who was like, you know, six foot eight, and just, I don't wanna guard him. Yeah. And so it didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So they said, you go play in the NBA, which is basically a parallel league. It's a professional league that travels and you go, you know, more similar to our NBA. And then in the following draft, we'll, we'll, we'll come get you. So my first practices were, were with Hanebra. Mm -hmm. That was a team that, that um, showed their initial interest in me coming over. And um, that's who I practiced with and played with um, before they sent me down uh, to play with the Negro Slashers. Mm -hmm. And... How was, your, how was your first couple of games and how did you play or how did the coaches react to your game when you were there? Um, I, I really didn't understand what was required of or was, what was expected of me as, as a, a new professional. Like I wanted to be like the perfect teammate where I realized later that they didn't want me to be that. They wanted me to produce and that that's the difference between being you know, a teammate here and being a professional, like you need to produce. It's just like, you need to score. If we're paying you, you need to, you need to produce. It's, that's the bottom line. <laughs> so my first couple of games, I was just trying to, you know, I knew I was playing with former PBA guys, upcoming stars, uh, new American guys would come to the team. And I just wanted 
the team success. So defer, defer, you look good, I look good. Yeah. But it doesn't work that way. It's, it's if we expect you to, you score 20 points back home, you need to score, you need to, you need to produce here. So I started to hear things like, you know, does he want to shoot the ball? Like, why doesn't he shoot the ball? Like, and then, and then I realized, I gotta start looking, looking for mine. Mm -hmm. And 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 then you just gotta be a little selfish and, <laughs> and go for you. And when you did start producing, how did it feel to get your first paycheck? And and what were the the kind of great things that came along with being a professional basketball player in the Philippines? Because Philippines and basketball, like, people Coming worship in, yeah. basketball. It's like yeah. kind of a religion. It's a different, yeah. So what, what, what came with being this professional? Uh, uh, a lot of, I have a lot of great memories of, of that time. Signing autographs was fun until it wasn't. <laughs> um, we also had about um, 30 high school girls that would greet us every morning outside our house and after school they'd be waiting for just a picture, an autograph, you know, yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to say hi to you. That was always nice. Um, and, you know, everywhere you went, I, I traveled to different places in the Philippines and not thinking that anyone should know you, but your games are televised. Mm -hmm. And so people would recognize you and, and ask for your autograph in, in areas that are, are not even where you're living. And, and that, that was really my first taste of, that kind of like professional life and all, all the good and bad that, that gets thrown at you. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the things that I guess to you uh, was a shock when you were like when you all of a sudden you're playing professionally, you're getting paid, and all of a sudden all these things are coming at you. What you know? What shocked you, or what were the things that you're like? Oh, this is you know this is not what I okay with this or. Oh yeah, I mean with. In the, when you're in that position, everything good that you want is easy to get. And everything bad that you want, drugs, alcohol, the company of women, these are all things that can, are easy to find if you want them. But the one thing I struggle with the most is, is being a product, being a commodity, like being something that has value that changes depending on you know, how well you play or how or how poorly you play. That mm -hmm. I struggled with, um, I, you know, it's because it's less about who you are as a person. It's really what what can you do for me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready for that. Like I was, I was re young still, still, you know, 20, 21 at the time, mm -hmm. and going over there, I just wasn't ready to to be dismissed as a human and just and just to be a product. Mm -hmm. That was one thing I struggled with, you know. So. Was there, yeah. The last portion. Yeah. 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 Was there any games that you know stood out to you when you were playing over there that you know have, have great memories to you? Like, oh, have, have a good hard team? Yeah. Um, the, the the game that stands out most is probably the game that really defined my um, defined what people thought of me there because I was going to go head to head with the top player in the league. He's a former MVP, Alex Compton. It was going to be a head-to-head -head match between me and him. But again, this was accidental. I was probably the sixth man off the bench, mm -hmm. but our starting point guard got into a fight with someone the game before. Mm -hmm. uh, the Metro Stars, Manila Metro Stars, were on a streak. 22 games, I believe, 20-something games they haven't mm -hmm. lost, and that included international games. They were coming to play us. So we, we ended up winning that game. And I had better stats than Alex Compton. I got player of the game. Yeah. Um, and then you became, people started to really recognize you when you went out. And, but if I could point to a time where like things went from here to here, it was because of that game. Like they're like, you guys broke the streak. Yeah. Like they were untouchable. Mm -hmm. That was the, he was the Michael Jordan of the league and probably hands down the best player I ever played against. Wow. Uh, in in person, I had tremendous respect for him, and that's why I played. I probably played harder than I ever played against anybody else. Now, taking taking from that point in time, you were at that made you play at really high levels, and then it came crashing down <laughs> because they deported <laughs> the Philiforian products. Yeah. 
talk to, to us about that issue, your side of the issue. What happened? Why did they ship all these Filipino foreign basketball players? Why did they ship you, and how did you take that? So that year, the eight, well, some of the agents that brought me over also realized anybody with a Spanish-sounding last name, we could bring over and claim to be part Filipino. So any last names, Rodriguez, Alvarado, Lopez, Pena, these are all Filipino last names. They also come from many different cultures. Yeah. So anybody with that last name, an agent to play Division One sport, they were bringing them over. There was probably 40 uh, guys that came over that year with me. And I was the only, I know this, probably 99% sure I was the only person who was 100% Filipino blood in that mix of people that came over. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, we, now we have 40 guys who are stealing contracts from local heroes. I watched you play high school, college. Mm -hmm. You should be playing pro, but now you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the public rightfully got upset. Like, we don't want you guys here. They go home, go, you know, like, you shouldn't be here. You're not Filipino. So at the end of that season, everybody went under investigation, including myself. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that for me at least, I shouldn't be a part of it. Yeah. I was told like behind closed doors in immigration that I would just be thrown in as a way to make it seem fair because nobody doubted my citizenship. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where the investigation starts. I mean, um, but anybody that left during that year, they just considered, if you left, you're um, admitting your guilt. Like you couldn't prove you're Filipino, so you left the country, you ran away, fine. You're, you're no longer, don't ever come back. Mm -hmm. Blacklisted, don't ever come back. But I left for a different reason. I was never intending to be there um, for an extended period of time. That was supposed to be my summer job. That was supposed yeah. to be something. And I ended up being there from the summer all the way till, till the end of December. So it was much longer than I, than I went. I missed a semester of school. It's just to kind of finish up my season with my team. Mm -hmm. So I went home because it was more important for me to be the first person in my family to graduate university. So I went home, not knowing that me leaving, I got thrown into that group of people who, who were leaving because they thought they couldn't prove their Filipino citizenship. Yeah. Mm. So I go home, I finish my career at York, we go down to the Nationals, I have a pretty good um, career at York, fly over to the Philippines after I graduate. The first thing that happens when I scan my passport is they lock me up. I'm right. in the airport, and I don't know why. Yeah. Like, I'm in a room full of, like, criminals. Like, there's a guy knocks at my door, full tattoos, Japanese Yakuza. He says to me, why are you in here? And I'm like, I don't know. They think I did something wrong. And I'm like, why are you in here? I'm trying to be cool. And he's like, they think I killed somebody. And I was like, yeah, I didn't do it. He goes, yeah, me neither. And I'm like... You shouldn't be in there. <laughs> I'm like, no, for real, I gotta do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, so they, they locked me up and they said, you have to stay here overnight because you can't do anything. It's 11 p.m. We'll sort out with immigration in the morning. But at eight o'clock, they banged down my door and they said, you're leaving. I go, where am I going? They just grabbed my bags. They sent me to Japan. Wow. Ended up in Japan. Fly 24 hours later. Supposed to be in Japan. I'd seen people in the airport. Fans were already in the airport saying, "Oh, there's Lebai, and like, you know, he's supposed to go in the draft. Like, yeah. they're they're expecting me." And uh, I ended up in Japan. Wow. Well, wow. that ends like the show. <laughs> but hey, we're gonna continue our conversations off off the air, and you could probably see some conversations online on our social media channels. It'll be continued versions of our talks. But Dean, thank you for being on the show. Anything you'd like to say to anyone watching or anyone you'd like to shout out? Um, to this day, I'm still trying to work out getting back into the Philippines. I really just want to go back to the Philippines. I had an amazing time there. I want to visit with my wife. I just want to get back in the country. At this point, I can't. So. Um, that's, that's part of my story. Um, if you know I'm really Filipino, support me. <laughs> <laughs> He's Filipino. He's Filipino. Don't worry. Don't worry. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, shout out to my wife. 